Welcome back to GDT Tech Reviews. In this video we are going to do a detailed review and pick the top 5 best 14-inch laptops 2022. So let us get started and the review based on our studies and small research. If you have any personal suggestion do let us know in the comment section. If you are for the first time don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon for more videos. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use to for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. So let's get started. The ThinkPad X1 Carbon has the classic Raven Black, rectangular ThinkPad aesthetic we come to expect from Lenovo over the years. The lightweight chassis is made from a combination of magnesium and carbon fiber, with a nice, soft touch feel on the palm rest. There's an optional carbon fiber we've lid that gives the laptop an added touch of class and a softer texture, but it only comes on configurations that have a 3840 by 2400 display. There are a few subtle, but important, design changes from the Gen 8 version of the ThinkPad X1 Carbon. The chassis is a little bit longer and narrower, 12.38 by 8.72 inches versus 12.7 by 8.5 inches, in order to accommodate a 16-10 aspect ratio screen as opposed to the 16-9 to panels carbons have used previously. This allows for more vertical screen real estate you can use for reading web pages or editing documents. The dual hinges from Gen 8 have been replaced by one long, round hinge that takes up most of the width of the lid. And, in a welcome change, the power button now sits above the right side of the keyboard, where we would expect it. Though most laptops have their power buttons above the keyboard, Lenovo had placed the 8x1 Carbon, Gen 8S button on the side so that users could easily turn it on even if the lid was closed and it was connected to a docking station. However, the button was small, skimpy and awkward in that location. At 12.38 x 8.72 by 0 0.59 inches and 2.5 pounds, the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, Gen 9, is extremely thin and light for any laptop particularly one with a 14-inch display. By comparison, the Dell XPS 13, 2.8 pounds, 11.6 by 7.8 by 0.6 inches, is smaller but heavier while the Asus ZenBook 13, 11.97 by 7.99 by 0.55 inches, 2.5 pounds, is smaller with the same weight. The ThinkPad X1 Nano, 2 pounds, 12.7 by 8.5 by 0.6 inches, is much more portable but, like Dell and Asus offerings, has only a 13-inch display. Not surprisingly, the ThinkPad X1 Yoga, Gen 6, which is the 2-in-1 version of the Carbon, is heavier and larger at 3 pounds, 12.3 by 8.8 by 0.6 inches in order to accommodate its convertible mechanism. The Laptop Studio's top half is only a little bit thicker than a normal laptop lid but otherwise is completely normal when using it as a typical laptop. The main hinge is stiff and doesn't wobble a common problem with Microsoft's older Surface Book design, but you can still open it with one finger easily. The magnesium and aluminum chassis is sturdy and well-made, with nary a flex to be found. The laptop studio's design is also sturdier feeling and more stable than the typical convertible laptop with a 360-degree hinge. It has options for more powerful components than you typically find in a convertible laptop or Microsoft's own thin and light Surface Pro 8, as well. The screen is a 14.4-inch touch display, with 2400 by 1600 pixels and a 120Hz refresh rate. It's bright and color accurate, just like other Surface displays, and it's large enough to comfortably split the screen between multiple windows using Windows 11's new snap layouts. The 120Hz refresh rate provides much smoother scrolling with the cursor, better touch interactions, and reduced latency with pen input. The Surface Signature 3 to 2 aspect ratio makes working with documents and browsing websites more comfortable, but it also gives the Laptop Studio a footprint that's almost as big as a 15-inch laptop. At over 4 pounds and 0.7 inches thick, this isn't exactly an ultra-portable laptop, but it's not a huge chore to lug around, either. Pulling the screen forward is a bit awkward, you have to reach up and bend the top half backward until the magnets holding the bottom half in place release, and then you can bring it closer to you. You can then park it halfway across the deck, tenting it above the keyboard, but still providing access to the trackpad. Magnets in the deck grab the edge of the screen to lock it in place. 
I struggled to find a good use case for this mode other than watching movies on an airplane tray table or poking around on the touchscreen, as the angle of the display is still too vertical to comfortably write on it with a pen. The Blade 14's thin chassis is made from a block of CNC aluminum with an anodized finish for extra durability. A large, bright, backlit green Razer logo and green USB ports ensure you'll feel like you're using a Razer product. The Razer logo has a hard enough time looking classy, but glowing in neon green on an otherwise stark, expensive laptop lid makes it even more out of place. The Blade 14's overall look remains subdued though, especially compared to rivals. You can break up the PC's barren deck with a per-key RGB keyboard, which can be quite brilliant and colorful when given the chance to pop among the laptop's simpler design. Frustratingly, keeping either the desk or, especially, the lid fingerprint and smudge-free is a task for Sisyphus. Razer manages to cram a full range of ports on the Blade 14, despite its lean build. It features a 3.5mm headphone-slash-mic jack, USB Type-A and USB-C, both 3.2 Gen 2, on the left side. The HP Spectre X3 6014 arrives with a brushed metal design that's available in several color combinations. The 360-degree hinge, which allows the screen to flip back completely, turning the HP Spectre X360 into a tablet-like device, feels solid and reliable. The right-hand side is engraved with the word Spectre- a nice touch that further cements the HP Spectre X360's overall premium feel. In terms of connections, you get an audio and jack and full-size USB port on the right, the inclusion of a full-size USB port is a nice touch for such a thin and light laptop, plus two USB-C ports, a micro SD port and a physical webcam kill switch on the left. The latter allows you to turn off the webcam when it isn't in use, it's a great feature for people concerned about their privacy. It's definitely a big selling point, and that, along with the full-size USB port and micro SD slot, show that it is possible for a thin and light laptop to incorporate multiple connections without compromising design. It certainly puts the two USB-C ports of the MacBook Air, M1, 2020, and MacBook Pro 13-inch to shame. Open up the HP Spectre X360 and you're presented with a bright and vibrant screen, surrounded by extremely thin bezels. This gives the device a modern look, while keeping the overall size of the laptop down. The biggest news is that there's now a 14-inch MacBook Pro. It isn't physically much larger than the previous 13-inch model, thanks to a taller screen with narrower borders. It's available in silver and space gray, no festive colors for pro models, it seems. The brushed metal texture of previous models remains, and the Apple logo on the lid is mirrored but not illuminated. In profile, the new MacBook Pro actually looks a bit retro, with raised feet, flat sides, and almost no curve to the edges of the lid. The lid can be raised easily and the hinge feels very firm, but one ergonomic issue is the sharp corners of the little lip provided for your thumb. Build quality overall is very good, and there's no flex at all to the lid. What many people will appreciate is the return of various ports, most notably MagSafe for charging. This is a new, thinner connector that Apple calls MagSafe 3, and neither chargers nor MacBooks themselves are physically compatible with older models. You can still use Type-C ports to charge the new MacBook Pro, but MagSafe will be quicker, depending on the wattage of your power adapter. The thunk sound as the connector snaps into place is familiar and satisfying, as convenient as universal Type-C charging is, having MagSafe in addition is the best of both worlds. This is our first experience with Apple's M1 Pro Soak, which promises even more power than the M1 from last year's 13-inch MacBook Pro refresh. Apple is drawing new lines between its Pro laptops and the MacBook Air, or just MacBook, as it might be called. The M1 Pro leverages the same architecture as the M1 and is built on the same 5 nanometers process, 